。我等着你回来，我等着你回来。我想着你回来，我想着你回来。Hi, hi, everybody! Happy Halloween! I welcome you to J Palace Yamingong. My name is Eunice, but you can call me Yaya. To commemorate this spooky day, let's talk about some spooky topics like urban legends and creepy entities of Chinese and Taiwanese culture. So let's get started. Warning: There may be some topics that are uncomfortable. They're not exactly scary, but if you are squeamish or triggered by death or causes of death, turn away now. In Chinese culture, we don't celebrate Halloween. Instead, we have Ghost Month, Gui Yue, or the Hungry Ghost Festival. Unlike Western Halloween, which only lasts one night, the Hungry Ghost Festival lasts the entire seventh month of the lunar year. Festivities will peak on the fifteenth day when the gates to hell are fully opened. While the origins of this festival is unknown, it does date back to over 2,000 years. During this month, spirits are allowed to roam the earth. Spirits that have been on good behavior are basically given a pass to leave hell safely during this month. In order to appease these spirits, we are encouraged to bring them offerings or burn paper money. Because the Hungry Ghost Festival is a time where the spirit world and our world overlap, there is a list of do's and don'ts that are important to this holiday. Don'ts. Don't disturb offerings. Don't sweep them up, and don't move them around. If you see coins or money on the floor, leave them be. Do not touch them, as those are most likely offerings to the spirits. Avoid swimming. Water ghosts can and will try to pull you down. Don't urinate on trees. Trees usually house spirits, and urinating can offend them. If you can, avoid woods and forests altogether. Don't stay out too late. You never know what's lurking in the dark. Avoid taking photos. You never know if you're going to capture them on film. And it's best to not talk about spirits in general, lest you offend them or invite them over. Do's: appease the spirits by keeping them well fed with offerings. Keep the lights bright at home. They love the darkness, so it's best to avoid inviting them in. When traveling, knock. And announce yourself to the spirits. Tell them you are visiting and how long you're staying. You can also do this for restrooms. Overall, this is a very good habit to have outside the Hungry Ghost Festival. Basically, be respectful and avoid disrespecting them. These spirits are just existing, and if you don't mess with them, they won't do you harm. One of the main reasons why this month is called the Hungry Ghost Festival. Is because this is the only time that hungry ghosts can feed. Speaking of ghosts, there are many types of ghosts in Chinese culture, but here are a few: egui, or hungry ghosts. These are individuals who have been too greedy or gluttonous when living. Their punishment is to be constantly hungry and unable to quench their thirst or hunger. But this can differ based on the sins they committed when alive. Appearances of hungry ghosts are usually emaciated, but with bloated stomachs. The reason why their stomach is so big is because their hunger can span mountains and valleys. Unfortunately, they're unable to sate that hunger. Their mouths are the size of a needle, and therefore they are unable to intake food or water. Another aspect is that when they try to eat, they will spit fire, which incinerates the food or evaporate the water. This is the punishment of their greed. Shui Gui, known as water or drowned ghosts, these are spirits who have drowned and want another chance at living. Usually, these were individuals whose bodies were not given a proper burial or recovered from a large body of water. In order to find replacements, they will find victims, drag them down, and drown them. By doing this, they can either take over the bodies of the victims. Or move on while a new swigui takes over their place. While people do tend to avoid swimming during the Hungry Ghost Festival, these spirits can drag you down at any time of the year. Nugui or avenging ghosts. These were women that either died in a horrific manner, were murdered, or betrayed to the point that they took their own lives. The most popular rendition of these ghosts are women in all red. There are stories of women who were so betrayed that they vow vengeance. In order to come back as an avenging ghost to take revenge, 
these women will dress themselves in all red and hang themselves at midnight. It's also not a coincidence that traditional Chinese wedding gowns are also red. So let's move on from ghosts and talk about other creepy entities. Here is a very popular one, Jiang Shi. Jiang Shi, or hopping vampires, were first mentioned in Yuan Wei Chao Tang Bi Ji by Ji Xiaolan during the Qing Dynasty. The looks of Jiang Shi can actually range from emaciated and mummified to rotting corpses in the later stages of decomposition. Their bodies are stiff with rigor mortis and thus cannot move their limbs. Hence, why their arms are always outstretched and they are hopping. But they are always wearing Qing official uniforms. The creation of the Jiang Shi is actually pretty recent during the Qing Dynasty. The reason why they're wearing Qing official uniforms is due to the frustration of the Han citizens. The Han people saw Qing officials as soul-sucking monsters, and thus this creature became the symbolism of their ire. Remember, the Qing Dynasty was ruled by the Manchurians, and the Han people were angry that a barbarian minority was in power. Thus, they vented their frustration in a way that they won't get in trouble. There is a long list of how they could be created, such as a black cat with white paws jumping over the corpse, struck by lightning, improper burial, or even a violent death. And with their popularity in movies, this list continues to grow. These creatures suck the living essence, or chi, out of the living in order to kill them. But with the influence of Western vampires, they are also said to now drink blood. Like most supernatural entities, these stories may seem a bit far-fetched, but there are truths to them. My grandfather has actually seen Jiang Shi. He used to tell me stories of when he was younger and homeless in China, he would rather sleep in graveyards than in temples. It was during one of these nights that he laid his eyes upon the Jiang Shi, but not in the way you might be thinking. What people are seeing as hopping vampires may be nothing more than corpse transportation. In Chinese culture, we want to be buried near our hometown or else our souls can get lost or lonely. But for individuals who don't have the money for fancy transportations, we'll instead use the method xiang xi gan shi. Bodies will be arranged in a single file line with bamboo poles tied to their sides, usually along outstretched hands. The flexing up and down of the bamboo pole will give the illusion that these corpses are hopping. This ritual was done at night as it was said to be unlucky to see this practice. The ringing of the bells was both a signal of when to lift, but also as a warning to anyone around the procession. This is a Taiwanese urban legend of the Mo Xinga, or Mo Shenzai also known as the Hongyi Xiaonihai, or the little girl in red. These entities are very similar to the fairies of Western tales. They are known to steal away children and the elderly. Sometimes the kidnapped individuals are recovered safely. Some you're even lucky to find a body at all. And even though this sounds sinister, they're not evil entities. In fact, they're either playful or mischievous, they're attracted to children because they see them as fun and they want to play. If anything, it's usually the disrespectful and rude individuals that are never found or found dead. As a rule of thumb though, we tend to avoid woods and forests at night. Like many other cultures, we also have our form of death gods or Shinigami and that is the Heibai Wu Chang or the black and white impermanence. Like their name states, one figure is cloaked in black and the other in white. Before they were deities, they were originally mortal. Long ago, two constables, Xie Bian and Fan Wu Jiu, were escorting a criminal from one location to another. Unfortunately, the convict managed to escape and they went looking for him. In order to cover more grounds, they decided to split up but agreed to meet under a bridge at a certain time. Xie Bian was the first to arrive under the bridge and decided to wait for his friend. Unfortunately, it started to rain heavily and caused flooding. Fan Wu Jiu, unable to reach the bridge, decided to wait until the rain stopped. By the time he got to the bridge, he saw the floating body of his companion. 
Shi Bian had refused to break his promise to Fan Wujiu and unfortunately drowned. Overcome with the grief of the loss, Fan Wujiu hung himself on the spot. The Jade Emperor was so moved by the loyalty that these two friends shared, he rewarded them by appointing them as the guardians of the underworld. Shi Bian is the white guard, and his name means those who make amends can be at peace, and he is the more benevolent of the duo. The black guard, Fan Wujiu, which means those who commit crimes will have no salvation, is the more stern and fierce of the two. From a personal experience, I believe that these two do exist. Towards the end of my grandfather's life, he was confused and not all the way here. On the last day that he was able to leave his bed, he told us that someone was going to pick him up at 4 o'clock. We already knew that he was at the end of his time, but I was still paranoid that I was going to lose him that day, so I stayed with him. 4 p.m. passed. I even stayed with him until 4 a.m., but nothing happened, so I put it in the back of my mind. Two weeks later, he left. He left around 4 p.m., and I do believe that someone came and escorted him away. While it was fun sharing the story with you guys, there is something very important that I hope you take away from today's video, and that is to be respectful. Before filming today's video, I actually took some time to meditate in order to announce my intentions to anyone or anything that will listen. I told them that I was making a video and that it was in no way disrespectful. If anything, I was trying to educate on what and who they are so in the future their space could be respected. Because if you respect them and respect their space, they won't do anything to you. So what do you think? Do you have superstitions? Or do you only believe what you can see? I would love to discuss or hear your experiences, so leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like or subscribe to J-Pal's Yamingo. I would very much appreciate it. So, until next time, happy Halloween! Zaijian la! Bye-bye!